The day I moved into that nondescript apartment in a nameless part of the city, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I'm a freelance graphic designer with a knack for finding good deals. And this place, the previous tenant had left in a hurry, leaving behind a few odds and ends. The most noticeable being an old refrigerator. It was an ancient thing, with a dull metallic sheen and a gentle hum that became a familiar background noise in my new home. I remember running my hand along its cold surface, feeling its age and wondering about the stories it could tell. The first few weeks were uneventful. I spent my days, it was on a lazy Thursday evening, while reaching for a slice of leftover pizza, that I first noticed something odd. The pizza box was where I had left it, but inside was not the familiar triangle of cheesy goodness. Instead, there was a dish I couldn't recognize, something with a strange almost luminescent color, and an aroma that was both enticing and slightly off-putting. At first, I thought I had grabbed someone else's food by mistake, but that was impossible. I live alone, and no one else had access to my apartment. Maybe I was just tired, I reasoned, rubbing my eyes and deciding to call it an early night. Little did I know, that was just the beginning of a series of events that would turn my once peaceful sanctuary into a living nightmare. The following morning, I convinced myself that last night's incident was a product of my overworked mind. But as days passed, the bizarre transformations within my fridge became impossible to dismiss as mere figments of my imagination. One evening, after a particularly grueling day of work, I opened the fridge seeking the comfort of a homemade salad I had prepared the morning before. But instead of the crisp greens and fresh vegetables, I found something utterly alien in its place. It was a dish with tentacle-like textures, writhing ever so slightly, as if it were alive. The sight sent a chill down my spine. I slammed the fridge door shut, my heart pounding in my chest. Panic set in. Was I losing my mind? Were these pranks by someone with access to my apartment? I double-checked my locks, even set up a small camera to monitor the kitchen, but nothing seemed out of place. No one entered, yet the food kept changing. I tried talking to my friends about it, but their laughter and dismissive glances told me they thought it was a joke. My family, living several states, I felt utterly alone, isolated by an experience so surreal that sharing it only alienated me further. My sleep became restless, filled with nightmares of grotesque dishes and unseen hands preparing them. I started avoiding the kitchen, eating out more often than not. Yet, the thought of the fridge and its unnatural contents, lingered constantly at the back of my mind, an unyielding source of dread in my own home. As the transformations in my fridge grew more frequent and disturbing, my curiosity mingled with an undeniable sense of dread, compelled me to investigate. I began to delve into the history of the apartment and the peculiar fridge that came with it. The building was old, its history murky and obscured by time, but it was the stories about a previous tenant that caught my attention. This tenant, according to the landlord's reluctant recollections, was an eccentric chef known for his bizarre culinary experiments. He was a reclusive figure, rumored to be obsessed with creating dishes that transcended the boundaries of our world. His sudden disappearance years ago had left many questions unanswered. As I dug deeper, piecing together snippets of overheard conversations and fragmented records, the pieces of a chilling puzzle, the connection to my fridge and its unnatural phenomena was becoming painfully clear. The cold sense of unease settled over me. Was it possible that something of the chef's essence, his mad pursuit, had imprinted itself onto the fridge? But the more I learned, the more isolated I felt. My friends, once a source of comfort and laughter, now kept their distance, convinced I was either playing an elaborate prank or slipping into madness. Their skepticism stung, but I couldn't blame them. Who would believe such a far-fetched tale? My health began to suffer. I lost weight, my eyes grew dark with exhaustion, and my thoughts became consumed with the fridge and its grotesque contents. I felt trapped in a waking nightmare, where the lines between reality and the surreal blurred indistinguishably. The once comforting walls of my apartment now felt like the confines of a sinister trap, with the fridge as its malevolent heart. One night, driven by a desperate need for answers, I decided to confront the mystery head-on. I made a pot of strong coffee, determined to stay awake and watch the fridge, to catch whatever force was at work in the act. The clock's hands moved slowly, the night deepened, and the apartment was filled with an eerie silence, punctuated only by the low hum of the fridge. Hours ticked by, and my eyelids grew heavy, but I fought the urge to sleep. Then, just as the clock struck three, something happened. The fridge began to emit a faint otherworldly glow. I rubbed my eyes, questioning if sleep deprivation was playing tricks on me. But no, the glow persisted, growing brighter. With a sense of trepidation that gripped my heart, I watched as the fridge door slowly, almost hesitantly, creaked open. Inside, the transformation began. Foods twisted and contorted into bizarre, unrecognizable forms. It was a grotesque ballet of the unnatural, a sight both fascinating and horrifying. And then, I saw him the ghostly figure of the mad chef. He was ethereal, his form flickering like a flame in a drafty room. His eyes, though, were intensely focused, brimming with an unrelenting obsession. He moved with a spectral grace, his hands orchestrating the transformation of the food with a maestro's skill. The chef turned to look at me, and in his gaze, I saw an endless abyss of madness. His mouth moved, but no sound came out. 
It was as if he was trying to communicate, to impart some unspeakable truth or perhaps a warning. The air grew colder, the atmosphere denser, as if reality itself was bending under the weight of his presence. I couldn't move, couldn't speak, held captive by the sight. The chef's figure began to fade, his silent message uncompleted, and the glow from the fridge dimmed. As the door slowly closed, the normalcy of my kitchen returned, but the imprint of what I had witnessed was seared into my mind. In that moment, I knew beyond any doubt that the chef's spirit was trapped in the fridge, cursed to eternally experiment with his otherworldly recipes. And I, unwittingly, had become a part of his haunted legacy. The revelation of the ghostly chef left me reeling. The boundaries of my reality had been shattered, replaced by a truth too bizarre and terrifying to fully comprehend. Yet, despite my fear, a resolve formed within me. I couldn't live in the shadow of this haunted appliance. I had to get rid of it. The next day, I attempted to move the fridge. But no matter how much strength I mustered, it wouldn't budge. It was as if it had become a permanent fixture of the apartment, an immovable monument to the chef's cursed experiments. Frustration and despair gripped me. I even tried to destroy it, attacking it with a hammer, but it was futile. The fridge remained, unscathed and mocking. My desperation led me to seek help, but who would believe such a tale? The few friends I dared confide in dismissed it as a joke, and professionals looked at me as if I were mad. I was alone, tethered to a nightmare that refused to end. It was then that I realized the terrifying truth. The fridge wasn't just an object, it was a portal, a gateway bound to the very fabric of the apartment, and by extension, to whoever resided there. The chef's spirit, trapped in its cold confines, had woven a web that I had unwittingly walked into. With a heavy heart, I made the only decision that seemed left to me. I had to leave the apartment. I packed my essentials, leaving behind much of what I owned, including the accursed fridge. It was a bitter pill to swallow, abandoning my home, but the alternative was a life overshadowed by an unending supernatural horror. As I took one last look at the apartment, a chilling thought crossed my mind. The fridge, and the restless spirit within, would now wait for the next unsuspecting tenant. The cycle would continue, the haunting enduring beyond my departure. With a shudder, I locked the door for the last time and walked away, hoping to find some semblance of normalcy in a new beginning. The aftermath of my escape from the apartment was a mixture of relief and lingering dread. I found myself in a new place, smaller and more humble, but free from the eerie presence of the haunted fridge. Yet, the experience had left its mark on me. I jumped at the slightest sound, and every time I opened my new fridge, a part of me braced for the sight of something otherworldly. As days turned into weeks, the memories of the apartment and the ghostly chef began to fade, like a bad dream losing its vividness with the coming of morning light. I tried to immerse myself in work and rebuild the social ties I had strained with my unbelievable tales. Life was returning to a semblance of normality, or so I thought. Then one evening, as I prepared dinner in my new kitchen, I opened the fridge to grab some ingredients. That's when I saw it a small, unrecognizable dish sitting on the middle shelf. It was nothing like the grotesque transformations in the old apartment, but it was a dish I did not remember buying or preparing. A cold shiver ran down my spine. Had the curse followed me? Was this a sign that the chef's spirit was not bound to the fridge of the apartment, but to me? I stood there, staring at the dish, a thousand thoughts racing through my mind. Had I truly escaped, or had I merely brought the haunting with me? The story of the haunted fridge and the ghostly chef might have ended in that old apartment, but it seemed the shadows of the supernatural had a longer reach than I had ever imagined. The realization settled in, heavy and ominous. The haunting wasn't over, it had just taken a new form. And so, as I closed the fridge door, a deep sense of unease took hold. What had started as a bizarre anomaly in an old refrigerator had become a haunting that permeated my life, a chilling reminder that some mysteries latch onto you, refusing to let go. The story continues, and I can't help but wonder what lies ahead in this unnerving journey.